It's about time we have a chat about the loss of the divine. What's up guys, Hello, Hansel here, and here we are to do a nice little breakdown slash discussion on whether or not we should give Sukuna his domain back. At this point. At this point. Now, at the time of recording, we're on chapter 253. He lost his domain before even chapter 230. So it's been over 20 chapters without Ryomen Sukuna having access to his domain and expansion. So we got a whole expansion of a conversation we need to have about it. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Are you ready? Three, two, one. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to uh, have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact, Ryomen Tsukuna, Domain Expansions. You don't have it on him, nor does he keep it on him at all times, at least very specifically at this point. Of course, if you remember the first time we saw Ryomen Tsukuna open his domain since, I believe, Shibuya, is in chapter 225, which is like literally in a hundred chapter gap between the last time he used his domain, once again in Shibuya, versus now. But of course, now, due to a certain somebody who will be named eventually enough, because he's kind of important to this discussion despite being... Or I suppose being, I suppose being, or I suppose being, whatever you want to say, a certain someone is, yeah, we're going to lost his domain. And it's, it's for a very good reason, right? Because we're in a, we're in a conundrum where if, and I mean if, Ryoman Sukuna gets his domain back, we've lost, Right? Like, <laughs> the thing about this domain expansion, the malevolent shrine, the power, a work of divine art. Like, the thing about this bad boy is that it's so overwhelmingly powerful and is very specifically built to have a horrid matchup against everybody except for one man who's still currently fighting the cook. Like... It's the it's the real unfortunate thing, right? Because there's a reason that this ended up having to happen. Not that, not that. We're gonna get to you in a second. We're gonna get to you. There's a reason that this ended up having to happen. Because without that, no one no one beats Sukuna. Even presuming, right, that Sukuna still has his super low, mega low, giga low output to the point where bros like Hada! and then the Hada! is getting. Oh, and then they eat it for the most part, and then they just Chad walk through it, and then punch him in the mouth again. Even assuming his output's that low, the way Malevo and Shrine ends up working, it would likely just tear them apart eventually. Even characters as powerful and as as much cursed energy as someone like uh, Kotsu, Yuji Tadori, who seems to be extremely powerful, have some sort of resistance and have arms entirely immune to the slashes, who would also get torn to ribbons. Maki Zenin, unfortunately, is not immune to the dismantling aspect of Malevolent Trine, which will also tear her to ribbons. And, of course, even Hakari Kinji himself is immortal. He's immortal. Don't get me wrong. He's definitely immortal. For how long, though? Hmm? Hmm? For, uh... For four minutes and 11 seconds and don't get me wrong Akari Kenji he's, he's quite the powerful guy right like maybe he would be able to survive it but the, the big issue is that Hakari Kenji is not doing what Gojo Satoru is doing he's not hitting Sukuna hard enough in the midst of a domain battle in order to break Sukuna's domain he simply is not Hakari Kenji is likely being danced around for the next 4 minutes and 11 seconds when Sukuna gets bored with him. And then, the moment Hakari goes to open domain, oh wait, your domain shattered. Even faster than what Gojo Satoru's did, considering how fragile Gojo Satoru's revealed to be against Malevolent Shrine. I know there's a lowered output, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be enough of an excuse for the domain barrier. Especially considering the caliber of domain barrier is likely going to be, like, I don't want to say massive... But it has to be, right? Like, don't get me wrong. Yudo Kotsu, very proficient barrier user. Hakari Kinji, an amazing barrier user. Faster than even Mahito with it. Up there, in comparison to Gojo Satsuru, in terms of domain activation speed and sure hit activation speed. But, in terms of quality and strength of the barrier, no student, at least other students who do have domains, like your Yudas and like your Hakaris, no, nobody should, like, compare to Gojo. And remember, Gojo had to literally break the rules of domains 
aka forcing himself down into a space smaller than both of their biomasses in order to get a domain sturdy enough to hold off an encounter. Yeah, Hakari, he may be able to do it, but at the same time, Malevolent Shrine would still be active and still be cooking his domain. Yuda, he may be able to do it, but once again, Malevolent Shrine would still be active and still be cooking his domain, even if he did manage to pull out what is considerably an impossible feat that it stated that Gojo Satoru himself is only able to replicate because of his experience with the prison realm. Which is something that no one else, at least in our current cast and crew, unless we, unless some, some shock horror reveal, no one else is able to do this. Even with their extreme pro domain proficiency and expertise. So, if he gets it back, we lose, right? So we shouldn't give it back to him? Yeah, about that. So here's the thing. I've, I brought up this comparison before, though it's been a while, so I'll bring it up again. This... This is my pencil. Beautiful, ain't it? A nice, creamy sunset orange. I don't think it's whatever sunset. And then we have this wonderful, wonderful, amazing, legendary, ah, I dropped it, next level, sky blue pencil. Guess what? Ah! They both produce the exact same lead. They both have the exact same style of grip. They both have, uh, shockingly enough, this is rare for me, comparable eraser amounts. They even got a good grip on both of them. So, if I were to take this pencil or this pencil and put it to a sheet of paper, I would most likely be able to produce the same thing, regardless. Meaning that ultimately, the choice on how I decide to draw is nothing more than aesthetic. AKA, it doesn't really matter. So, I would like to direct you to a uh, certain statement, a certain fact a certain logic that I think you know, and I know, and everyone who's been reading JJK knows, uh, it doesn't matter whether or not Tsukuna has domain. It doesn't matter if he doesn't have domain. It doesn't matter. Ah, we'll get to you, fella. It doesn't matter much of anything. Because uh, Ryoman Tsukuna is just that guy. Like, like so much that guy. That at any moment, he could just off him off. It don't really matter, for real. For, like... <laughs> That's the, that's kind of the big, juicy, hefty, scrumdily, I'm just conundrum we're in right now, where it doesn't really matter, because Ryo Mansukin is just that powerful. He's just that him. As Uraume definitively says at the end of chapter 252, I'll be real with you, Mr. Kenji. With your insane optimism, I can see that Lord Sukuna still isn't taking this fight seriously. And like... Nina reminds you, if the statement isn't enough, yo, do, do, do y'all do see what he does to Maki? The person who, based on this one feat alone, this singular feat of leaping a fully charged hidden world slash, this one feat alone that puts her at least perception, reaction speed, and combat speed wise above everyone else we've seen, including characters like Yuda Kotsu, Yuji Tadori, Hikoruma Hiromi, Kashima Hakime, all these characters. Heck, well, obviously not Gojo Sato. Once again, Gojo Sato is still a tier above. But even still, all that. And look what Tsukuda can do to the person who is definitively the fastest. He can still perception blitz him. It don't even matter. Like, that's the thing. No matter how Sukuna chooses to do it, everyone's alive by his whims. Literally simple as that. It doesn't matter how much damage he's taken. It doesn't matter how many people have hit him, how many people have jumped him, ganked him, moved his arms, moved his eyes, spit in his face, tongued him down. It doesn't matter what has happened. Ryoman Sukuna is just that almighty. So why not give him his domain back? Because I'll be real. I'm still loving Sukuna. I think Sukuna has been very interesting to see on a character level. But I won't even knock you. I won't even disagree with everybody. Sukuna's low P, not even low P, low key, been getting kind of boring in terms of how he's fighting. Because it is just all slashes. It is just all bang bang. It is just all hmm, or hmm, or hmm, or like it's just pointing and slashing things. That's fine. That's cool. Maybe he's going to whip out a Fugo on Kusakabe's head or something in the next chapter. But ultimately, it's kind of losing its sauce. Is it still cool? Of course. 
do I still appreciate Sukuna and how he's been fighting and growing and evolving as a character and finding himself being challenged and disrespected for the first time ever and being forced to lock in so hard that, well, not forced, but locking in so hard that he hits a black flash. I'm like, all oh, this, fantastic, beautiful. Scrumly, I need to see some noodles. Something a little bit spicy. So you may be wondering, okay, pencil man, you want to see something new? You want to see something spicy? You want to see something scrumdily on just delicious even? What does that, what does that have to do with giving him his domain back? You know, the, the thing that lets him slashy slash real good? Like, what exactly does that to, exactly? What would change other than just make even less sense? Because I'll be real, I'll be real, a issue that I may have to tag on its own separate video entirely yeah, it doesn't really make sense that our cast is alive, especially if he's able to just freely do this. Like, uh, you can only take, oh, it's his personality and he's holding back for fun. Oh, so far before it gets a little bit unreasonable. And I say we're long past the point of unreasonable. But with that being the case, what would giving him his domain back do other than more slashies faster and also make less sense if the series kept going on when he had it back? I agree. So in that case... If you ask me, verbatim, do I think that Sukuna should get my level and shrine back? I'd actually say no. I don't think so. I think that would, once again, cause too many narrative problems, too many scaling problems. It would be unstoppable based on what we've seen so far. And especially with him hitting this black flash and slowly but surely starting to restore his output and the lack of input from Megami Fushiguro, it's very clear that Ryoman Sukuna is just in two dominant positions. So we can't give him his domain back. But wait a minute, who who did I just say wasn't wasn't doing anything? Wasn't fighting back? Who did I just? Oh, uh, oh, Megami Megami Fushiguro. Now, what what was Megami Fushiguro's curse tick? What was it? Gosh darn it! My brain it's it's it started with a T, ended with the N shadows. What was it? Oh yeah, the Ten Shadows technique. And I don't know about y'all. I don't know about how y'all feel about this. I'll make a video talking about this too. But uh, I, I don't know what your confidence is in Megami coming back. But I'm like, I'm, I'm down in the trenches. I'm kind of, I've given up on Megami. Just like how a lot of people have given up on Nobara, myself included. I, I low-key have given up on Megami. Those stocks are long sold. But I haven't necessarily given up on the Ten Shadows yet. And considering Megami Fushiguro is still the basis for Ryoman Tsukuna. I think, in order to solve a couple problems, one, the problem of Tsukuna's getting a little bit bored with just slashing, two, the fact that Megami Fushiguro is kind of just being used as a person to be saved and not necessarily a body basis for Tsukuna since he's incarnated, and three, the fact that Malevolent Shrine would be just a little bit too dangerous all on its own, and four, the fact that we never got to see a complete variation of something I don't think you should give Sukuna back Malevolent Shrine without massive detriment to the narrative, but I do think you could give him Chimera Shadow Garden. Now, 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 I need y'all to hear me out. I need y'all to hear me out. I need y'all to hear me out. The thing about giving him this, in particular, is that you still run into a pseudo-uniform issue where, one, we don't know if he still has the 10 Shadows to speak at all since incarnating, and two, it would most likely be complete and barrierless. So, like, how does our cast win? <sighs> Do they have to, though? Do they have to? Because, I don't know, I've kind of gotten a community consensus. A lot of us believe that a lot of characters shouldn't really be doing the living anymore. We're all, we're all fine with uh, characters A, B, C, D, E, G, F, all the way the rest of the alphabet can all still go. So, instead of them all just going out by slashing, by dismantle nets, by cleaves, by space slashes, why not mix it up? Why not have a little fun with it? Why not have Sukuna hold back by letting them all just battle the Shikigami? Let's truly see the completed variation of Chimera Shadow Garden, something we've never gotten to see. And if we're just going to end the series with no Megami, which is something I'm fine with, we might as well get to see the absolute peak and pinnacle of the potential. We saw its application outside the domain. Why not give it to him as a domain? Let us see it. Let us see how Sukuna uses it. Let us see a barrierless Chimera Shadow Garden. Because another issue I didn't really address is the fact that the battlefield's low-key getting kind of boring. Like, no lie, I, mean, I, I like generic fight area, cityscape, but an area soaked in complete darkness. 
with a massive shadow creature lurking in the background. Oh, that sounds like it could be spicy. It sounds like it could flip everything on its head, and you could still include every single character fighting for their life and eventually failing. While switching up the fighting style, while giving Sukuna something new to do, while giving Sukuna more ties directly to Megami, and in an indirect way providing hope for someone like Yuji, who's like, Megami's still in there, he can still use his technique, it's not truly just Sukuna. We were right! Well, at the same time, raising the stakes ever more, because now they're fighting the completed domain of a technique stated to be able to rival the Limitless. That's how I see it. I don't think we should give Sukuna Malab and Shrine back, but I do think we should give him a domain. A Chimera Shadow Garden. But that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think Sukuna should just get his generic domain back and we should get Malab and Shrine? I think 4 or 5.0. And he just starts washing everybody. Point after point after point after point after point with only certain characters surviving. Do you think he should get another domain like Chimera Shadow Garden? Do you think he should get another, another domain? Such as a Fuga domain, the Fire domain, or anything of the sort? Or do you think the domain should simply stay banished for the sake of the narrative and its integrity? Please let me know all that and more in the comment section down below. And to thank you so much for watching, please do leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as low as one, kind of one, down month, get things like exclusive videos, early content and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reaction to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen along with ad-free variations of all my videos and if you become a $25 patron or a $25 member you can order whatever video you want. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching once again and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is that with the Pencils. <laughs> when I made people clicked off already. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave new domain leave new domain in the comment section down below i uh, thank you so much for watching once again i hope you guys have a wonderful day this is dagger the pencil writing off Hi, I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members: Connor Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Red Wolf Four Seven Six Five, Eternal Flame, and Teen Mitgo. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $5 patrons, Steron, Sean, Panda Goat, Midnight Lord 21, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneo, and Ehack1. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $7 member, Autumn Mornings Lazo. And I'd like to give a big thank you to our $10 member, Jay Warrior. And I'd like to give another thank you to our $10 patrons, Joaquin and Idemokami. Well, along with another juicy thank you to our $25 patron, China Doll 9 And I'd like to give a final Giga Gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.